Good morning guys and gals, I'm Pal and welcome back to Pikmin 2! Yesterday, we got our first treasure, crash landed on the planet, but fortunately had no casualties. No Pikmin died, and Louie didn't die, which is all that matters. This time, we're going to be flying back to the Valley of Repose because... Do we really have any other option? And we're going to be seeing what treasures lie in store for us there. Land in this area? You bet, yeah. Except no, I'm gonna press B. Except I'm gonna fly in. No, I'm gonna press B. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's land, shall we? <laughs> the Valley of Repose. Good morning, workers! Workers? Who are you calling workers? I could have quit the company. You, I, you're here on my charity. Don't don't you tell call me workers. You work for me. I refuel you. <sighs> Ready for another day of toiling for the profit of your company? The Pikmin seem to still be asleep inside their onion. What lazy creatures! No wonder they lack survival skills. Stand beneath the onion and press A to call them out. <laughs> okay, I don't know why I gave him that voice, but it seems to fit really well. Yes, Olimar, you've done this before, so I'm gonna have Louie do it instead. Joke's on you, game. You don't own me. And I can whistle them out early. And now, let's see what's opened up to us. Nothing up there, uh, but there's some pellet posies. So one of the thing, one of the reasons why I like this game so much is because it feels like a real world. And case in point, yesterday, those plants weren't there. Yesterday, that plant, which has yet to grow, wasn't there. And it really feels like it's alive, you know? Things change. There, I mean, weather patterns have yet to be added in the game. Um, you're gonna have to wait until Pikmin 3 to see those be added, but still, the next best thing is here. Certain enemies will only show up on certain days. Certain plants will only show up on certain days. When you kill an enemy, then it won't actually respawn until you kind of take a break from the area or just let a certain number of time, a certain amount of time pass. And it makes sense. You know, there's a certain territory that animals adhere to. Oh, we should probably accelerate this. Yeah, you get on that. You get on that. Good job. And you come back. That, but there's a certain, uh, there's a certain territory that animals in the real world adhere to where, you know, they, even if an animal dies in their own territory, it, they won't be invaded until a couple of days until, you know, their, their marks on their territory have grown old. And then other animals will move in. And it just makes sense from from not just a design standpoint, but from a real-life standpoint. And it makes the game really feel dynamic, like you're actually taking part and surviving in a world. And then when Pikmin 3 came along, let's see, is that sprouted? Uh, not yet, okay. When Pikmin 3 came along, uh, let's leave, let's leave Louie here. When Pikmin 3 came along, they added weather patterns, which really kind of sealed in the whole world feels, <laughs> world is big, have place enough feel. Also, I just realized that you could completely fail this day by just throwing Pikmin on the other side of this paper bag. That'd be that'd be terrible. That'd be a terrible way to start playing this game. Okay, uh, now these are dwarf spotted bull borbs. No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, I'm not losing my first, my first, uh, Pikmin today. Uh, let's see. Let's kill this guy first. So if that's a dwarf spotted bull borb, then we need a parent. And this is the Spotty Bulborb. Dun dun da. But it's actually not the parent of those. It's it's explained that this is actually just a larger variant, and they take care of each other by these guys being the lookout for the larger ones when the larger ones are asleep. Okay, but there is a strategy. It's called bum rushing. It's a been changed a little bit from Pikmin uh, 1, so I'm a little bit worried about this. Will we kill our first red spotted bulborb, or will we lose Pikmin trying? Let's find out! Oh, come on, please, please, please. Oh, no, this is easy. Oh, yeah, we got this. We got this. We got this. He's dead! Yay! 
Yay! But yeah, in uh, Pikmin 1, there was a, a strategy which was fondly called bum rushing, where what you do is you would use the C-stick and rush the rear hind end of a a spotted bulborb, and you could kill him that way. But they nerfed it a little bit in this game, because if you try to do that, then, well, before, what would happen is you kill it before it was able to actually fully wake up. And in this game, it gets up quicker, so it has a chance to counterattack before you can kill it. So I usually like throwing Pikmin at it instead, uh, and then you kind of you kind of stagger it, so it shakes off some, and then more fly on, and it, it works pretty well. All right, while we wait for those those enemies to get back to the onion, uh, I would like to talk about something, because in case it isn't obvious, or in case you feel a weird sense of deja vu, where I'm standing right now is not natural. And it's one of the reasons why I continue to love the Pikmin series so much, because it has one of the most well put together stories in the Pikmin series. Here, come here. As one of the, the best stories. No, 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 no. It has one of the best stories in the Nintendo, you know, franchise. Um, there, yes, there's the story of, oh, there being a, there's a debt, we have to, we have to pay it off, or I'm stuck on this planet and I have to survive, but there's also a darker one. Um, if we go back, sadly I can't continue plucking these, but if we, if you look at the thing that I just showed you where Olimar is, he's actually standing on a manhole cover, and those paper bags are next to, or are in between, a curb. So why is there a curb? Why are there paper bags to begin with? Why is, like, this is a an actual curb right here. You see this? That's a curb. This is a gutter. This is a curb. And this is a sidewalk. And that's because this game, well, that's good. That's coming along rather nicely. This game is set in the real world. Hundreds or thousands of years, or sorry, hundreds and thousands of years after humanity is no more. And the best part is, this is not even a theory. This is backed up by the designers multiple times and also within the game itself. I mean, obviously we have these human relics. We have a, a crushed, uh, what is this, like a tomato? A tomato thing? Tomato uh, can or something? And last time, last episode, we found a battery, but it's it's backed up multiple times. And how? So how did uh? Or where did humanity go? Oh, cutscene. How could Pikmin destroy such a massive wall? When massed, their might is ferocious. Louis, did Olimar instruct you on proper Pikmin commanding protocol? Apparently not, Olimar. You are failing in your duty as a superior. Allow me to explain. Press A to grab Pikmin and release to throw them. Call them into, into group with B. Yes, I know. We already went over this. Yes. The C-stick function was removed in Pikmin 3, and that's why a lot of people don't like it. Okay, we're good. But this is backed up multiple times in game. Not only are there a bunch of artifacts, but there are... Uh, but there is... Allusion to how humanity disappeared. And how it's alluded to is actually in one piece of evidence. Only one but it's definitely enough to sustain the argument. In Pikmin 1, you find a Geiger counter, and it is one of the components of Olimar's ship. Now, this Geiger counter, as soon as it goes on your ship, and even before, it is going nuts. Oh wait, does this end the day? Snap, this might end the... Uh, you know what, no, I don't think this ends the day. I hope not. If not, then I'll eat my words, but... I don't think this ends the day getting this. I hope it doesn't. But the entire time, the Geiger counter goes absolutely bonkers, which suggests the end of humanity in this universe. Nuclear war. And this is called utter scrap. I, I don't even know what it's supposed to be holding. Huh. Tomatoes? I have no clue. Or is it... Oh, it might be SpaghettiO. I'm not sure. Okay, we, now let's, let's return back to Olimar. Nuclear war is the end of humanity uh, as we know it in this universe, which actually makes sense considering when this game was made, or when Pikmin 1 was made. 
It was made around, uh, well, 2001, but obviously the development would have been around a little bit earlier. And the, and, uh, the world was kind of just coming out of Cold War. I don't want to say just, but it was pretty recent, you know? It's in recent history by that point. And so it only makes sense that a nuclear holocaust would be the explanation for humanity's disappearance. Interesting. Warm air is welling up from the hole in the ground before you. What could lie underground? What is wrong? You both show expressions of unease. Do not fear. The leader's group of Pikmin will join you. I shall dispatch my research pod as well. Approach the hole and press A to jump in. So yeah, it's it's backed up in all of the games as well. But before I talk further about that, this is a hole, which are... It's a mechanic that does not return in the series, and this is the only game that it's in, but I actually like it a lot. They're basically dungeons, and we're going to be entering the Emergence Cave, not hole, the Emergence Cave this episode, because we have nowhere else to go. Now, time freezes while we're in here, so we don't even have to worry about the days passing. So, without further ado, let's jump in. But we can even, actually using uh, the artifacts in-game, determine when this nuclear war took place. It would, would have been around the early 2000s. Now you're saying, pal, uh, of course it would be the early 2000s. That's when the game came out. Like, they would obviously use artifacts from that time. Well, actually, that's wrong. Because not only did this game, did, or was it placed around the early 2000s, but it was also placed right after the GameCube was launched. Because in this game, spoilers, you see only a couple of artifacts pertaining to the GameCube's existing, uh, existence. A control stick, and a control stick only. But you see a bunch of other artifacts from the Famicom, the SNES, and I think even the N64 everywhere. Uh, I think the Virtual Boy as well, uh, the Rob units. And so you can, you can place that this game, or uh, the nuclear... Fallout would have happened right after the GameCube, or even a little bit before it was launched. Intriguing! My heat sensors indicate that this hole's interior is warmer than on the surface. Analyze analysis suggests subterranean areas may support different life forms than the surface. If you wish to trek underground terrain, press start pause to communicate with me. I am not just a ship, I am an all-purpose support pod. Now, this could still be backed up by saying, oh, well, it came out in the early 2000s, so of course it's going to be, it's going to have more artifacts from the 90s than the actual pick, or the GameCube era. But actually, that's not even true either, because in, they really did a good job backing up this, the gameplay here, or the, the lore. Because in, here, um, in, come on, yeah, there we go, in Pikmin 3, which came out in what, like 2012? It has a bunch of artifacts from humanity! Got it. Including a cell phone. Now this being 2012, you'd think that they would have put a smartphone in there, right? No. They actually put in a flip phone. Yeah, they put in a flip phone. Or was it a Nokia phone? I think it was one of the two, but it wasn't a smartphone. So they put in a early 2000s phone as the cell phone that you find, which backs up the theory. It's it's really cool how they, they actually made such a dark storyline in this game. Like I said, and I've been talking about this for a long time. How can you possibly consider this beast a treasure? Beasts are incompatible with my circuitry. I suppose I will store your finds in my hold. But, I do not think beasts will be worth much. It's one of the reasons why I enjoy this series so much, because it's dark. And for Nintendo standards, it's dark. For anyone's standards, it's quite dark. And I love it! It's, it's so good! Alright, we got an orange, 180 Pocos, name is... The Citrus Lump! Neat. I got a... <laughs> I got a lump. Awesome. But yeah, I, I know it's a huge topic and one that probably is deserving of its own video. 
Uh, but I, I knew that this day was going to be longer so I could cover it. In fact, actually, they they took in, they pulled out all the stops for telling the story. In, um, in Pikmin 1 and 2, since they're so close together in Olimar's time frame, also this is the, it's a 7-up thing, uh, cap, quenching emblem, that's a cool name. Uh, Earth actually looks like Earth. It, it has a normal map on, or it has the map that we're familiar with. However, in Pikmin 3, since there's a considerable amount of time for, you know, Olimar's time span having passed, uh, the continental drift has taken place, and I believe it's Pangea Ultima that the, that Earth more closely resembles, which is what scientists believe the Earth to look like, uh, like a hundred million years from now. And so even Einstein's theory of time-space relativity kicks in, which is really cool. They, they pulled out all of the stops to tell this story. This hold appears to be quite deep. My sensors indicate more treacherous terrain is ahead. Louis, you do recall that you can adjust the camera with L, R, and Z, correct? Your expression suggests you do. Excellent, then approach the hole and press A to enter it. But yeah, there are actually a couple, there are one or two holes in this theory, but for the most part, it, it holds up. When those holes present themselves, I will talk about it, because this isn't the last time I'll talk about this story, because it's just, it's so stinking good. But yeah, it's it's so cool. It's one of the reasons I, I love this game so much. All right, emergence cave. Now talking about the actual thing we're doing. Uh, the like I said, the while you're in a, one of these holes, time freezes for all intents and purposes. And there's actually a problem with that, which I have yet to solve. Okay, um, I have enough Pikmin. I can just swarm these guys. Kill them. Nice. Uh, but there's a little bit of a problem with that. Uh, there's so many cutscenes. When it, when time is frozen, you guys know that I like to organize my episodes for Pikmin 2 in terms of days. I introduce each episode as saying good morning, and I end them by saying good night. Uh, it's inconceivable that such an immense object has been buried here for so long. The design on the outer shell resembles the surface of the planet as seen from space. Perhaps this can be used from for something other than salvage. But how will we ever lift it? I fear that even 100 red Pikmin will be unable to lift it. Epic foreshadowing much. But because I, I like to introduce episodes in terms of days, that means splitting up episodes for time doesn't really work. Because if I'm doing it for time, then if there there's a long cave, which believe you me, some of these caves are long. I think the longest one is around 15 floors. And so it would take, it would probably take an hour to complete. No, you don't. I'm not losing a Pikmin to a dwarf uh, white bulb orb. So I'm not sure how I'm going to separate out episodes. Also, I'm going to leave that guy for now because there's a, speci a specific reason for it. Let's just walk by him. Run, 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 run. And discover these. Astounding! A flower blooms in a cave deep beneath the snow landscape. Clearly, it is warmer down here than above. Look, the Pikmin are restless. They look as if they yearn to be tossed into the flower. Alright, these are violet candy pop buds. But to finish what I was talking about, uh, I'm not sure how I'm going to be separating out episodes, because if I do it in terms of time, that means we might have multiple episodes that cover technically the same day, because I go into a cave. It might even be worse, because I'll head, I may head into multiple caves in the same day. And so I have no clue how this is going to work, uh, but I'll try. I don't think that I'll be having all of the episodes, or uh, a day be uncut, because if I have a day where I go into a 15 floor cavern, and it being an hour episode, that's not good to watch. So. I'll probably separate it out in, with respect to time, but please give me your thoughts in the comments if you would like that, or if you know of another Let's Play that has done this game, and they did it in a manner that you, you liked. Alright, now that I can actually talk about the game, because there's so many pre preliminary things to get out of the way. These are Violet Candy Pop Buds, and the, the ship has told us that the Pikmin look like they want to be thrown in. I mean, I don't know, do these Pikmin look like they want to be thrown in? 
They really just look like they're looking at me. They're they're hungry and they want to eat Louie. But I guess I'll I'll throw five of them in. Or six. And these violet candy pop buds, if you're familiar with Pikmin 1 at all, you'll know that candy pop buds change the Pikmin thrown in into the color that the candy pop candy pop buds are. But these are purple. We've never seen pur purple Pikmin in the series before. And that's because it's introducing a new friend. Amazing! A purple Pikmin! It has hair! <laughs> and is quite stocky! It seems to be very heavy and strong! This kind of Pikmin was not mentioned in your report, Olimar! It must be an entirely new type! Transforming Pikmin by tossing them into flowers. Intriguing. Perhaps there are others. Purple Pikmin. The, uh... <laughs> previous Pikmin games and, well, previous Pikmin game and the next title are always known by the Pikmin type that is useless. There's usually one that you hardly ever need, and when you do, it's for a very brief moment. Now, these purple Pikmin, they're not it, because they are, uh, they are ridiculously overpowered. That's right, overpowered. So what they can do is they have no elemental immunity. They, they're not immune to fire or poison or electricity, but they do bring a couple things to the table. First of all, they do a ground pound, which is why I left this enemy here. Also, when I'm holding Pikmin, I can use the D-pad to switch between colors. So, this ground pound is also homing. So, if I throw a Pikmin here, it homes in to the enemy next to it. But also, they can carry, if you look here, they can carry as much as 10 Pikmin. 10 Pikmin. 10 Pikmin. They also weigh. 10 times as much, which means they do a lot of damage, and whenever there's something that involves weight, uh, they definitely outshine the competition. But also, there's another thing. In Pikmin 1, Red Pikmin are known as the best fighters. They can deal, I believe, 1.5 times as much damage as a normal variant. And in this game, that's still true. They are really good fighters. Except for the fact that they're not the best. The best belongs also to the purple Pikmin, because they deal three times as much as a normal variant. Three times! So, if you have a death squad of 100 purples, you will instantly kill anything that stands in your way. Providing it doesn't have, it's not wreathed in flames or poison, it's going to die. And it's going to die a horrible death. Now, the, the downside to Purple Pikmin is that they're exceedingly rare. They can only be found in underground areas, and it's not in high amounts. You can see we got, what, 15? No, we got 10. We got 10 purples here. And that's, that's around the average of what a cave will offer. Sometimes it'll offer a lot more. I think there's one that offers 20? But you have to go down, and it's like a 10-floor cave. You have to go down go six floors, get purple Pikmin, go six more, get purple Pikmin, and then leave, and then do that again if you want to keep getting purples. Now, like I said, I've played so much of this game that I have, I think, like, 400 purple Pikmin on my private log, but it took hours upon hours of, of spelunking to reach that number. It was absolutely insane. So we got this half of a globe here, which I have yet to talk about. It required 101 Pikmin to carry, which we... The only way we could do it is if we had 10 purple Pikmin. So I guess if you throw a... Uh, if you let some of your purples die, then you'll have to go back through this cave. This is the spherical atlas. But fortunately, we have not had a death yet. There is a device resembling a microchip embedded inside this sphere, retrieving data. Error! I could only decode a portion of the data, but I did retrieve new geographic charts. 
I will input this data into my planetary database and name it the Sphere Chart. <laughs> Press start pause to contact me and access the Explorer's key on the radar screen with L. Now that we have this new data, we, you should explore the decoded territory tomorrow. Now, this part isn't proven, but it is thought that the reason why this map allows us to access new areas is because while we could just use our our eyes while in orbit, orbit to uh, see the area, like see the, the world, be like, oh, there's land there, we'll land there. Okay, done. Um, there's There are a couple theories saying that the chip inside of the Atlas is um, documents the, what is it, Pangea Ultima which is, you know, the continental drift that I talked about earlier. So, it allows, basically, uh, the ship to determine what cities or major areas um, where they would be since the, the continents have changed slightly. Astounding! Water is shooting out of this geezer with incredible force! Sensors indicate it has enough power to launch you into the air. Approach it and press A to try! How are we planning on leading, leaving this cave if this wasn't conveniently here? Uh, it's a valid question. Also, what is... I, I've never really thought about this, but... Oh my word, I know what this is! Oh, that makes so much sense! Oh my goodness! Okay, so you know how we saw a manhole earlier? Well, this is a culvert! And it's bleeding up. This is all oh my word. That makes so much sense. It's part of the storm drain system. That's why we went. Oh my good. Oh, and it's actually the emergence cave. Could it be like emergency exit? I don't know. That makes so much sense though. It's even about the right size. Wow, that makes so much sense. All right, we got three things. Cave complete. Ooh, oh, I just realized there's a secret I can show on here. So, if I wait on here, I, I don't think I've ever done this on my own time, but we're doing it now. Uh, if I wait on this screen, not only do I get to look at the very beautiful confetti and hear the great music, but also, if we wait on here th about three minutes, we will hear something. Uh, the, the music de developer, designer, composer for this game uh, is to uh, Kazumi Totaka. And he's known, he's very famous for this, uh, for it by this point, for leaving hidden gems in every game he's worked on. Some of them haven't even been found yet. And he has a song called to Totaka's Song that he will hide in every game. And this is where it is hidden in Pikmin 2. So if we wait a couple of minutes on this treasure completed, or this cave completed screen, we will get to hear it. So I'll cut to that. Hey, there it is! It took so long, wow. I think that was around three and a half minutes, and I almost gave up, but wow, okay. Usually it's about two and a half, or one and a half minutes, but no, there it is. I guess he wanted it pretty well hidden this time around. All right, with that out of the way, we go back to the Valley of Repose. And we actually have nothing left to do, so I'm not sure if the game is going to immediately end the day? Wait a minute, why are there Peloposies there? I already cleared them. <laughs> why are they there? <laughs> That's odd. And now they're gone, I think. <laughs> okay, Phantom Posies. Okay, uh... You have successfully returned to the planet's service! Excellent decision-making, gentlemen! We must celebrate your first successful spelunking expedition! You've gathered a large amount of data that needs in-depth analysis. I shall send a report back to the president tonight detailing your progress. Olimar and Louis, since you will explore a new area tomorrow, today's work is done. What? You still want to work? Unacceptable! You may not realize it, but you are exhausted. 
you should take a much needed rest, as you have all the time you need to collect treasure. I love how they say that verbatim, because one of the main things that turned people off of the first game, Pikmin 1, was the fact that it, there, you were limited on time. Even though it's a fantastic game and the time limit isn't really that restrictive or tight, uh, it, they, people still didn't like being timed. But they're pointing it out here. Yeah, you, you have uh, as much time as you need. Hate makes waste, so take it slow and steady. And thus ends the second day. With our purple Pikmin, they will go into the ship, since they don't have an onion of their own. If this were Pikmin 3, then they would have a magical onion that would perform fusion, the fusion dance, and uh, we'd get a purple and red onion, but... Also, the Palposies are back again! What is this? <laughs> what? The Phantom Posies. I need to have a museum dedicated to this rare sighting of the, the Phantom Posey. It'll be called a Symposium! <laughs> uh, uh. Man, we got a lot. And I love how I picked up every single beast just automatically because this game makes me want to grind. In fact, actually, wow. This is probably the game that gave me a love for grinding in video games. Huh. This is the one that started it all. This is the one that started me uh, farming in Fire Emblem Awakening for hundreds of hours. Huh. Also, there are pu purple Pikmin. Just to prove it, that I didn't use editing magic. Zero deaths. When will the first day be? Find out tomorrow, since it will probably be tomorrow. For another exciting episode of Pal Plays... Pikmin. Baby steps first, Olimar. Plan well and don't worry about me. Our debt is ha is with Hokitate Freight Savings and Loan, after all. Besides, there is nothing left to be repossessed, so ha! Huh. Alright, once again, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed today in any capacity, please click like. And if you didn't, then drop a comment telling me how I could make tomorrow a better day. I'll see you guys next time for another Pal Plays. Oh, I release this episode every Tuesday, or I release new episodes of Pikmin every Tuesday and Thursday, and join me next time where we will be traveling to a new area already. See you guys then! The Valley of Repose. <laughs> it's gorgeous. Now I'm playing the game in 1080p.